Hey guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I've got a quick video on how you can boost the performance of Reason if you're experiencing slowdowns. Now, obviously the easiest thing to do is just to say, well, get a faster computer or whatever, but that's really not feasible for most of us. Um, and so what we're going to do instead is show you the settings you can use in Reason to improve the performance of your tracks. But before we get into that, I do want to say that you are going to want to close all the background programs that you're running. Those uh, are going to slow you down. You're going to want to, you know, not only close all your like browser windows, but if you've got something maybe like Dropbox or, you know, Spotify, something running in the background, be sure to close that out so that the only thing your computer is focusing on is Reason. Uh, by the way, if you want to take your Reason productions to the next level, I've got an entire cheat sheet dedicated to showing you how to use all the devices in Reason. Uh, there's a link down below to download that. But now let's get into the exact settings you should use to boost performance after the intro. Okay, so the first thing I want to point out here is down at the bottom, there's this thing called delay compensation on and off. This is going to basically make it so that the routing between various plugins balances out and you don't hear phasing from multiple instances uh, going through slightly different processing times. Uh, this is absolutely essential to have on when you're doing the final mix of a song, but when you're recording, leave it off. This will boost performance significantly, and then once you bounce everything as an audio file, you're going to be good to go. And you can turn it on once you start doing the mixing. Another thing, just a general principle, is delete unused tracks. You want to keep this as, like, detailed as possible or as refined as possible. You don't want to just have unused tracks sitting there muted if you know you're not going to use them. Hit delete, that'll save a lot of processing power. Unfortunately, Reason doesn't let you just sort of like turn off tracks the way other DAWs will, so delete's going to be your friend there. Um, similarly, just, uh, you know, turn off processing that you're not using. For example, here, you know, if you've got a compressor on, but you're not really using the compression, turn it off. Um, same with like invert, you know, these things are all going to require processing power to put on. So if you don't need it, turn the equalizer off. Going to the instruments, the same thing applies. So, you know, here we have a uh, Europa. So if you don't really need it to be multi-voice, like if you're only playing a few voices, lower it from 16 voices. If you don't really want any filtering, literally turn it off. These things will boost performance. Another thing to note is like Dr. Octorex and a lot of the sample players have a section here if you expand it out. Um, or is that on the back? I'm sorry, if you hit tab and uh, it's high quality interpolation right here. If you turn this off, it will play the samples back at a slightly lower quality, which will boost performance a lot, like in the aggregate, if you've got a bunch of samples being played. There's even a low bandwidth version, which will take it down even lower. Um, and then when you go to mix, just turn them both on uh, as you render the song or uh, as you bounce things to audio. Uh, similarly here, there's a filter on, but it's not actually doing anything. So just turn it off. There's lots of little things throughout that can really speed up your workflow. Uh, well, it doesn't speed up your workflow, but it can save a lot of processing resources. Um, now, where most of the gains are going to be, though, these are all like little tiny things that add up over the song. Where most of your gains are going to be is from going up here and going to preferences. Um, and I'm going to show you how to dial in the perfect set of preferences for the best performance and reason. But before we go farther, I would like you to let me know if I've skipped anything, any other performance tips, um, or if you're struggling with performance issues on your computer, just leave a question or a comment down below. And if you're enjoying this, be sure to like and subscribe for more useful reason tips. Okay, so let's start out actually on the general tab. Here's a few things you can do to boost your speed. So here on reduce cable clutter, go down to hides all cables. That's one less thing for the engine to render. You also want to turn off cable animation. If you notice, 
with cable animation oops, on, it jiggles. You don't need that. That's using processing power. Um, but now where the real gains are going to be. All right, so here's where the big boosts are coming in from choosing your audio settings. First, you're going to want to select your audio card. If you're not using an audio card and you're just using what's built into your computer, the performance is going to be way worse. So get an audio interface. It's really going to speed things up. From there, you're going to want to lower the sample rate down to 44. Now, this will affect the quality of your song, but um, nothing is baked in into Reason until your song is actually bounced out, as long as you're just doing MIDI and synthesis. You do want to turn this up to record audio. I like to use 48, um, and that's also what I like to export at. But for, uh, like, if you're just doing a purely synthetic, synthetic song, you can leave it at 44 for the whole time that you're recording, um, and then bump it up when you're ready to export your song. Uh, you probably won't notice much of a difference in sound, but it will make a huge processing difference. When it comes to buffer size, this is probably one of the single biggest factors. Buffer uh, is like how long it takes it to go in and out of your audio card. The longer or the higher your samples are, the more performance you'll be freeing up, but you'll also introduce lag between when you press a note, like on a keyboard, and when you hear something back. So this is a tough balancing act to maintain while recording. Um, I found 512 is usually, be, usually manageable, especially if you're willing to just go up and clean up the MIDI a little bit afterwards. Um, 128 and like feels pretty responsive to me. 256 is also a good compromise. But then once you're mixing, you just go all the way up to 4,000. It'll free up a lot of headroom for your processing. If your computer has multi-core audio rendering, uh, well, if your computer has multiple cores, and most modern ones do, they're a dual core, quad core, six core, or whatever, click to enable multi-core audio rendering. This will let Reason tap into all of those cores. Similarly, I think hyper-threading boosts it, I think by allowing it to uh, tap into like your computer's tuber, turbo boosts, maybe. I don't know exactly why. Um, and render audio using audio card buffer size setting definitely improves the plugin, the performance of like VST plugins and things like that. So there you have it. Um, those are the main steps to optimizing Reason for super fast performance. A couple more little tips. Only have one instance, one song open at a time, right? You can open multiple versions of Reason, but each one is going to slow you down. Um, so only work at one Reason song at a time. And just, you know, don't be afraid to bounce things to audio because Reason can very easily handle playing back tons and tons of audio files. Uh, you know, so if you're really happy with all the sounds you've got baked into your synth, bounce it as an audio file and, you know, maybe create a new save version of your product project with just audio files and then start moving from there. I really hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching. And again, be sure to like and subscribe.